going to try and not touch the table so that it doesn't bounce the camera. We are here to do the 2020 read. Okay, Scorpio, a very warm welcome back for 2020. Those of you who have continued to watch my channel, thank you. I really appreciate it. Here at Yildiz Readings 5D, we cover astrology, ascension symptoms, energy update, moon cycles, twin flame path, your general reads. Um, I'm a psychic medium as well as a twin flame in the union. So let's get into the read. Now, this one entering into 2020 for January is covered deeply in various areas, including your romance house. Obviously, during the month, I'll come to you for the moon phases. And should time permit, I am going to start doing mid-months as well again. But I'm easing myself into 2020 because I know the astrology is going to be heavy as well as emergency bookings will be running rampant. So I'm working in with it. I also will be experiencing these dynamics. And a very warm welcome to those of you who are returning. Now, pulled crystal as your crowning energy. Very separately, I would highly recommend amethyst moving into 2020, chakra stones, and black to blind or onyx. Now, that's really going to help. And it's so bizarre because you've got black obstinate as your crowning energy. Um, you guys are deeply, deeply psychic, okay? You deeply, um, you dig deep, right? Let's see if you've got any 12th house. No, you're lucky. You're lucky in various areas, but obviously as the planets move, there are various planets that are going to be doing the same things for a while. The Aries and Chiron energy for you guys falls in your house. Your 6th house, which we'll cover on. Your work environment, uh, your work, your habits, your health, and your routine. So with Mercury coming through by March, some of those energies are playing out, obviously, because the nodal energy is going to be changing. So we have Cancer Capricorn energy we've been working through. Uh, for you guys, that has been in your third house of Capricorn and in your ninth house for Cancer. So come January, the eclipse is going to be in your ninth house. Now, that's your spiritual beliefs. Again, it is... <laughs> It's sort of like um, the 12th house. So again, the um, amethyst will really assist with that because when you are tapping into your 5J, the things that you believe, the things you're directly connecting in with 12th house activation can come through. So especially since you've got Black Ops to name, um, I'll read the card to you in a minute, but your Aries placement in Chiron will be there for another seven years. So you'll find energetically there will be things that come up for you. Uh, it tends to stay in Aries a lot longer. It's the first sign of the wheel. So it tends to stay there eight years, whereas with other zodiac signs like Libra, etc., it's about two years approximately. It's a shorter transit than Saturn's transit. So with the Aries in Chiron energy for you guys being in your sixth house, Again, it's to do with your belief system. So all of a sudden, you're going to find that uh, with your work, with your routine, the way you're connecting in with it, um, potentially people's expectations. You're finding that you're changing, but there can be wounds in those areas. Your health also really looking at that and how direct external environments can deeply impact your internal environment. And the obstinate is really going to be quite supportive of that, including the other stones that I have um, recommended for you guys to attempt and try. And, you know, use a journal. See how it actually works with you. With the amethyst, especially if you're very, very intuitive and you're developing that relationship with your third eye and your crown chakra, it can open it up even more so during retrograde. So you'll tend to experience ascension symptoms more so around the retrogrades, especially with Neptune aspects um, and you being a Scorpio. So it says, I pay attention to what is going on around me and within me, which is health domain as well. How are both energies? And I didn't even read it. And now, you know, it's coming through very similar to what I've said. So it's, it's reintegrating and saying that, yes, in fact, we're on point here. I am attentive, okay? Now, release negative thoughts. Again, how it directly impacts your employment, your work, your routine. And this is something temporarily moving into January with the eclipse coming up in Cancer, which can directly impact our family domain, our home domain. With this Saturn-Pluto conjunction, it's around the time of the eclipse. 
it's also a transformative stage because it's in Cancer. Some of it can link over to last year, moving over ending cycles. Now, release negative thoughts, maintain attention on the present moment. Increase situational awareness, improves responsible thoughts and actions. And again, that's the Capricorn energy. The Capricorn energy in your third house is to do with the way you communicate, the way you express yourself, your day-to-day -day routine, you know, your short journeys. Having that managed, the Capricorn energy connected to the Cancer Eclipse, you might have kind of um, developed that last year and it's really applying it in 2020, especially since in March the nodes are changing but the eclipses are still going to continue on. Um, for a bit in those energies and then they'll come through in Gemini and Sagittarius. So Gemini is directly connecting with Mercury, our movement, our communication, technology related issues. So you're going to find with the nodes being there for two years, those subject matters and broad range knowledge are going to come through. Okay, but it's also being open to other perspectives. Then you've got the Sagittarius energy, which again in the nodal frequency can be similar to the planet of growth being Jupiter because it's governed by Jupiter. So in a sense of what we've learned last year, playing out simultaneously into the new nodal energy, you'll find all of these things bouncing off around us and we're directly applying them to the 3D life of what we're experiencing. The obstinate is going to help you be very grounded and anchored into the here and now. Not Even though we can have trigger points, pain body experiences in retrograde, you tend to find that your sacral chakra solar plexus will be activated whereby you can utilize your power or a pain body experience can come up and especially your base chakra. When it comes to your health, pay attention to what is going on. You know, listen to your body, document, keep a journal and see potentially what trigger points are coming up so you can directly hone in on those energies and disable them, so to speak, so that they're not operating like a nav man system and standing in your way. And the subject matter for um, 2020 is really a vibrational number four, yeah? Picking a tribe, working with things, um, honing in your energy onto those things so you can actually get the best out of the situation. And really asking yourself with certain house placements, placements, where have you been standing in your way to prevent yourself from reaching that goal, uh, you know, achieving the grandest of situations. So some of you might have looked at your career and been going through the motions. Others of you might be looking at that, that it's really important right now. And in order to move into it where you've been given extra responsibility, really seeing a sense of who you're really made of and what you're made of and that you potentially can go further than you actually dreamed. Now, in your financial zone, and as I've said, I'll pull general cards in different areas so we can interlink it. Plus, I'll mention back to the energies. Obviously, if I'm picking that it's connected to the eclipse, I'll mention it to you. But be mindful that subject matters connected to family can come up. Um, there can be abrupt moves where we're shifting energy around the house, getting that chi feng shui energy balanced. Some of you might have already been doing that in 2019, probably from October all the way through to December. Um, that's when you really tapped into the matrix of your intuition and you're living in your truth and being quite authentic. You're following your higher consciousness. You're trying to get your finances in order, okay? You're also very private when it does come to the things you're investing, the money you're using. You might not be sharing that information due to a previous experience, but I do feel you're holding your cards close to your chest when it does come to investments collectively. This is both within relationships, but it's also about being present, okay? Don't feel that the same repetitious cycle is occurring. Intuitively tune into it in the here and now. Take the lessons you learned over the last few years. We're entering into a new decade and move into it in a flowing sense. But I feel you're trying to place your money effectively where it needs to go. But the communication also with the Gemini nodes coming in is already going to be playing out where you're going to have to communicate effectively when it does come to your finances. But I do feel keeping your cards close to your chest, choosing who you directly trust when it does come to mentioning things, can be even communication and relationships where you're feeling uh, maybe keeping a reserve for some reason or feeling a bit protective of that. Uh, it, it does mention that we should have a little bit of a backup plan in a sense of 
finances, but I'm not feeling that negatively aspected. I feel a lot of that work you've already done. In your work domain, I do feel some of you are having to multitask at a very high level. Some of you may transition through um, doing a business online or something to that degree, especially the nodes being in Gemini. You tend to find it's quite um, innovative. Uh, you also come to a place where a hobby can turn into a career. At the same time, it can be doing too many things that, you know, potentially your tear of employment was here and then all of a sudden you're doing more and they're seeing the light of what it is, especially with the sixth house activation in Aries. Uh, but speaking a truth with that situation and seeing that, you know, it doesn't have to be that the same scenario is playing out theoretically of a past tense. So if you had been given extra responsibilities, you have talents beyond what um, people potentially have given you credit for. So there is a judgment that you're needing to make and there's also talents yet to be seen. So don't underestimate yourself in the month of January. Some of you are meditating upon two given paths of where you're going to go, how you're going to do this. And I'm still saying it's interesting because in a sense of a new start, you know, Getting it to the point where you've got all your information on hand, getting your finances in order, looking at the things and making those plans. I'm hearing you were very organised, okay? And, and some of these things are unseen, Some of, and I have pulled the unseen, and some of these things are things that you've been prepared for. You intuitively knew these changes were happening. Let's have a look. Now, in your dream state, your fifth house is activated, so... When it does come to your delusions and illusions, Neptune's really going to help in the Pisces placement for you guys to see what is truth and what is um, a falsity. Now, obviously, with Venus making its aspects, we can then hone in on that energy during the moon phases and during the astrology during the year. But in a tribe notion, I pulled love and tribe and I've got the romance free directly below. It's new starts, it's fresh starts with people, okay? There is a change happening in a family-related dynamic. There's a change happening when it does connect in with the people you're relating to. There can be people from the past nostalgically there where you're not codependent on each other, but you can catch up with each other. You can talk to each other either via telephone or um, catching up for a coffee or, you know, if you're man, catching up, playing around the golf, football, whatever it is. But just directly catching up and having that interconnection and that new start. There is a genuine energy here, but there's a lot of communication going back and forward in the domain of tribe. I feel you're going to have to be quite direct with these individuals. So there's certain people, and again, it is really creating those healthy boundaries. Now, it can be innocence, it can be ignorance, uh, where people are seeing things from certain perspectives. But I do feel as long as you... Uh, can keep grounded uh, when people are communicating and seeing from which perspective they're coming from with your crown chakra and that's where the amethyst and uh, even a, a red stone, a gemstone that is going to help balance your base chakra. I feel you're going to be looking at these situations quite groundedly. So the risk point I feel is more so between the eclipses, so from the beginning of the month to about the second or third week. Now, we have back-to-back -back eclipses, so in this subject area, I do feel very much it's linking in with tribe mentality, the foundation, things that are going on, and understanding that, you know, it's a natural ebb and flow of changes that are happening. These changes don't mean to say that you won't have connections with these people, but the way in which you're looking at things and the trigger points, what well, connected to the astrology, Plus the tribe that are around you at the moment, we do tend to attract things that are supposed to A, upgrade other people or B, upgrade us. So it's trusting in the process when it comes to that. Now in love, you, you may be feeling that there's many ways that this can go. And again, this can be, ironically so, seven is deeply spiritual, but it's also, this card is about fantasizing, okay? You know there's many ways the situation can go. There's various ways you can look at it. Now, with Neptune and Pisces, I mentioned it two seconds ago, being the fifth house. Neptune is the planet of dreams. It also can be the planet of um, distortion at times in a very small kind of range looking at it theoretically. 
looking at your relationships and your wounds. This can be your relationships in with children, with connections, with mother, father. Obviously, with the eclipses being in Cancer, it's going to bring those subject matters up. Your luck. It, you also know there are variables in life and there are things that can change. Providing you're flexible with that notion and understanding this doesn't mean a complete tower moment to the point of destruction. It means a transformation, being fluid, um, flowing like Abraham Hicks suggests down the rapids with that journey and knowing it's taking you somewhere. So having faith in the actual process. And I'm going to pull an animal totem card on that. It's so funny. Water on the card. Okay. Honor your soul's purpose. Like knowing that it's all written. Knowing that and if we're energetically meant to experience something, for instance, this is keeping it very simple, you know, not getting into too deep, right? Because you guys are super deep. <clears throat> The burdens, the responsibilities, the triggers, the things you've swum through, um, the luck also. And, you know, fish in cups directly denote finances, abundant connections. This is a very emotional connection, okay? Part of your soul path is connected to a very spiritual mission, a very spiritual path. There are traps, spiritually speaking, especially with your religious house activated, um, this can be to do with the spiritual connection, but it's it's your path. It's you being very anchored and grounded and trusting in your intuition because I just literally look down at Claire Quartz. Trusting in the clarity of your belief to know that you will always make the correct decision. And no decision is a decision and a path is a path. If it's divinely guided, you will always end up back. So it's almost like the road less travelled. Now, in your dreams, with what you're trying to get off the ground, achieve, even meditate upon, it is these injustices and they can be contracts directly linking them with it. <clears throat> Understand with these dreams, this can be waiting for divorces to come through. And I have to talk about this in a very general sense. Whatever your specific dream is, there is a contract linking in with it. This can be A, a spiritual contract, or it could be directly paperwork relating to this dynamic. If it's a business, again, it's paperwork and the, and the finances, especially with the coin energy coming through with the ace and the two of coins when it comes to your actual employment. It's getting all your ducks in a row, making sure that in the flaws in the plan with Saturn Capricorn conjunction, should they come up, you can look at it and then re-navigate that map system to then rectify those situations. This is a very new time we're moving into, a very unique time, but it's showing us where the dead wood is, not to actually prevent us from having the greatest of achievements, but to give us the tools and show us where potentially that plan of that building of that dream was slightly flawed. Now the karmic frequency coming through is there is there is our people in movement. So if there has been stagnation, something is energetically shifting us. And again, I do feel this is the eclipse. Our ego can tell us by what we're visually experiencing or experienced that it potentially is blocking us and saying no. But many times what it's doing is guiding us back on the path. And again, I am getting a lot of soul path energy coming through, a lot of trusting in the process, a lot of protection and being in the moment, which is very spiritual. It's very um, challenging to get to that level. And I do feel you guys have worked very deeply on yourself for that given situation. Allowing this cycle to end and trusting in the process that if our peoples occur, it, it's divinely guided and it's meant to happen. But to actually let go and allow that transitional state to happen. It's helping you actually be free. Some of these situations is choice. Some of it is set in stone. Okay, You always have a choice. So if you feel you can't handle something, and it's odd because this card's actually in reverse. So I think it's really stating that if you're on a spiritual path, when we're doing the work, we don't feel free. 
but by doing the work it frees us. So by dealing with particular vibrations, it pushes that purge to a point where you um, feel stuck, you own your power, you realise where potentially we could have been standing in our way. And this can even be something you already know and you're visually seeing this around you. So for those of you that have already passed that karmic test, so to speak, karmic energy could be playing out around you inside other people. But trusting in that process nevertheless. Now, what you're not seeing is this is going to be a change for the better. So if there is an upheaval and there is a change in the plan, and I feel it's coming at left centre, you're not seeing it coming. Some of it is divinely guided, and I keep looking at this gem song and shouting at me now. So... I'm going to read this gem for you. I can't pronounce it, so I'm not going to even try. I've got to get the camera angle right. There you go. And again, I'm saying anything, anytime I'm saying blue, it's linking it with communication, in my opinion. But again, research the stone more in depth, and you will see how it relates to your rate and your situation in January. When you do listen to these rates, Allow the energy to play out. You know, nine times out of ten, we're like, is that hitting right now? Is it resonating? Well, if you're not in January um, and you haven't made it through the energy, through the entirety of the month, and I'm not suggesting, nine times out of ten, you see it playing out quite soon. But allow the energy to actually um, move forward. Then go back and look at it and, and pick, your, pick your readings that way. Not all months energy is going to resonate. Always look at your rising signs, your Venus house, because all of those will give you an overall story about what is going on with you unless you actually get a private read. I receive messages all of the time and follow my internal guidance system. Okay, and I feel this is communication about it. So it's like you looking at situations. Activate intuition. Active intuition. Be a clear channel. Access the Kashik records. Stay grand. I'm telling you, this is a spiritual connection. Feel protected and safe. Promote clarity in the dream time. This is so spooky. It's spooking me out. Whatever is going to happen to you. My beautiful Scorpios, please trust it. Okay, you are protected. You really are. It, when we go through these things, it makes me feel very emotional just reading it. It's it's really hard. You know, sometimes we can feel, do we always have to be on our A game? Why is this conflict here? Why do I need to live through these energies? It can feel a bombardment of energy. Now, Whatever is coming up for you guys and whatever trigger points may occur on the 3D, please, please, please trust the process. You are directly, you've upgraded so much in your energy. And it's almost when I look at this gem, it reminds me of the bowl, the Japanese bowl, where it's got cracks and there are wounds, right? That... The wounds sometimes can prevent us from actually feeling safe, right? But we have to look at those wounds with gold plating. And it looks like there's shards of gold through the cracks. Like ice cracking, you know, becoming hard, becoming cold through the wounds. And the gold, which is the, the power, the solar plexus, the inner child seeping through like gold which is joy, self-belief, empowerment, ambition, and making peace with the inner child. I do really feel that internally, allow that light to come through, because, you know, these changes are for the better, right? There's been delays. What you're not seeing is these plans are changing to aid you. Detachment in the process of these situations is highly advisable. It really does help the spiritual process. Now, we're going to get tucked into your romance side of things, and this is where it really does get interesting. Now, your crowning energy is unity. So I do really feel, regardless of the relationships you've had in the past, and this could be really, really integrating this energy into you, you also could be um, connected to a spiritual connection, be it you're together or not. Your path is quite scarred, okay? And I don't mean can't, although through the wounds, yes, we do feel that way. Now you've got unity. Unity is coming from within, okay? A time of divine understanding, renewal, peace and hope. You radiate and attract great love. 
I feel your empathic energy. Uh, your deep emotional waters uh, can be coming up, but it's what's crowding you. So the belief in yourself attracts that, right? Past tense frequency, you may not have had all the solutions, okay? And you might have had to have walked away from a situation, changed it up, lost things in your in your path. You've freed yourself from this. Even if you felt you didn't have the solutions, it's trusting in the process. At the heart of it, this is a connection you are, which to me is past life, okay? I've got to get the camera angle right. I'm hearing forgiveness for the past, forgiveness for the past, and that can be in your life or in this connection, but it can be both. I feel it's that they're either wanting it from you or you're needing to have it for the situation. And again, looking at what made you joyful, but you've got melancholia in reverse. So if it is a past tense scenario and you're moving away from it into a different vibration, it is a positive vibration. But again, I do feel in a way, definitely pain in the connection. Some of you, if you're married, you might be renewing your vows. But it's also a renewal of the connection regardless. You don't need the paper or, you know, the ceremony. It feels a changeover of this situation. You're also choosing that. You've got this card in reverse. You've learned a lot of lessons and you don't want to go through the thorns anymore. And I do feel by Easter, I really feel this is going to change. But this could have been from last Easter. It's really a transformation of your energy. Withering the challenges ahead will bring a new and positive future. And it's in reverse. So it's like I feel you've already done this. You know, to turn over this new life because you got old in reverse. So it's the old cycle ending out. Now the crowning energy you have between you and this individual, which I will tune into their energy. You've got the devil, which is really the Capricorn energy. Now, yes, it could be you're dealing with Capricorn. But ultimately speaking, take care immediately to avoid temptation and deceit. You know, this could be something that's always on your mind. This could be something in a shadow sense that we're looking at our shadow. And during the eclipse in Cancer, it can be bringing up some of those dynamics of where there were unsaid words. There were things that needed to be discussed. Uh, there were fear-based frequencies. Just be really mindful that it's a temporary energy. And I do feel this is going to pass because the grounded energy, uh, the, the base of the situation is to do with a, again, it's a spiritual connection. So this could be ego coming from external sources. Seek love in the situation regardless of the wound, okay? If you can look at the wound and detach from it. And you've got porcupine in reverse. Free yourself of guilt and shame. It's like if you're stuck, all people are having a mindset to do with it. Uh, it's their issue, it's not yours. Okay, too. Again, this can be a karmic energy. This can be a feminine energy, not you, another. But it's knowing that you too can be part of a new tribe and bring something together. But it's a very serious subject that can be coming up. You've got lighten up in reverse. I do really feel it's serious. It needs to be dealt with. It can be a family-related dynamic and bringing things in together. Um, and, and the lack of celebration. Now, what is this? <clears throat> okay, I'm hearing you're not wanting to repeat a cycle. And so you're having a backup plan. You're like looking at it and you're seeing what transpired in 2019 and how to proceed forward. You're really gaining a strategy. You're looking at things differently with optimism. If you can't change them, you've got to let it go. Okay, you've got monkey in reverse. Now, this card says the situation calls for adaptability and innovation, and it's in reverse. And I feel with this lack of celebration and needing to have a backup plan, moving away from individuals that aren't supportive of your truth, of your vibration, and allowing them to transform naturally and allowing them to come in. Now, when it comes to this person, they can, they're turning over a new leaf. It can be a physical child coming into the connection, but it feels more that they're just transferring and transforming. 
but there are many opportunities and possibilities coming in. During this moon phase, I feel as though they're going to be reflecting upon a person from the past. And I feel this potentially could be you. But also, that even if you're together, it can be the past and where there were flaws in the plan. If you've had a breakup, definitely that subject matter can be coming up for them, but it's reflection of the past. Now, this inability to change direction can be within their employment that's hindering them. And it also is very separately them looking at what's not working and really wanting this fresh start. So I feel they're in the same mindset as you where they're wanting to change direction and rise through the ashes and have a happier life and not wanting to mix with people that aren't um, understanding who they are as people. Okay, something's going to come up. Now, this is a firstly protective energy. Now, this can be you or your partner. Now, partner can even be to you. Okay, you don't, if you're tuning into the energy, the person at home you're tuning into, this is their frequency coming through. It can swap though because you're tapped in, right? So following your passion, but this is quite protective. This is like looking at the shadow, looking at the energy, following your intuition, looking beyond the immediate appearance. This is in reverse. It's like really coming to the forefront, especially with the potential energy of something that hasn't ended yet because this is a karmic frequency and having to make a decision from where it stands right now which is the black ops domain okay taking it from where it is now knowing you're protected but making a decision and knowing that you have all the tools to be able to handle this situation it might even stink you got raccoon all right You're going to be able to adapt to this and the Gemini energy with the noble energy is going to help you. It might not feel it right away, but moving forward, it is going to assist you. But being adaptable to when this occurs, shift, you'll intuitively want to do this. You're making wise choices. You're accepting the fact that some people don't want to change and you're focusing on your dreams, okay? And this is both energy. So this is what is coming. So the adversity that you guys hold around you, Regardless of whether you're on communication or not, I feel it's coming to the forefront near the eclipse. These subject matters are going to shift the direction in which you're heading. Um, and it is going to be quite quick, so do be prepared. Now, for those of you that are wanting a private booking, which is always very different to these, I can tune into you psychically. Um, I come to you live so you can experience that. So sometimes I do tend to give away free giveaways or I'll, I'll jump on and I will answer questions during the live astrology sessions. If you want to see how my gift works and you're wanting to see how it connects in, which is very different to the zodiac signs because I'm tuning directly into your individual energy, um, come through and have a look. Come and join the tribe. Otherwise, I will see you during the month. Feel free to message me. If I feel your zodiac sign needs an update, I will do a bonus rate. And stay tuned, love and light.